Hey, everybody. I am so excited to um, introduce to you, if you don't already know, Andy Crestedina. He's the founder of Orbit Media, and he is based out of Chicago, Illinois. But chances are you have read something that Andy has written because he's written hundreds and hundreds of amazingly detailed articles that are so helpful. Like I literally have a folder just for Andy Crestedina's stuff because when he puts something out on his blog, um, which you can find at orbitmedia.com, you're, you're, it's going to be just, it's going to be just golden. And, and if you do what the article tells you to do, you're going to see major results with your online marketing, your content marketing, your analytics, all that good stuff. Um, and let's see. So he's also in the third edition of this fabulous book called content chemistry and what i love about this is it's so good like if you're a visual learner like i am so there's lots of it's like it's really colorful and there's all sorts of it just breaks it down really simply where something like this could be such a snooze i mean this topic let's face it i mean it could be it could be boring but andy makes it anything but boring and um and he's just an all-around nice guy like he um started this company orbit media and i'm going to let you elaborate on this andy but one thing when I heard you talk in the standing room only um, uh, venue at Content Marketing World twice, sold out, standing room only, um, he, it really resonated when he when you said that you started this company and realized that your forte was not really being a CEO, like your talents mm -hmm. lie in other areas. So you hired somebody else to be the CEO of your company, which I thought was so cool. And also the thing that Andy does that I think makes him stand out from most other people not only just in the online space, but just sort of in the world is that he um, he has open hours where anyone who needs help can get his help. And he keeps these open hours and he's he's busier than anybody that I know. So mm -hmm. that's you've been such an example to me in that in that way. Like I aspire to be Andy Crestedina. Oh, so, thanks, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. And I'm also so excited that I get to be the one to show Andy Blab. So he hasn't been on Blab before. So um, you guys be thinking of your questions. The topic today is five ways to increase traffic using Andy uh, analytics, Andy Lytics. There's a thought. Okay. Trademark hashtag. I, I, I made that up. Um, okay. So yeah, five ways to increase traffic using analytics. And um, so I'm going to let you maybe start and fill in the, fill in the gaps that I've, I'm sure I left out. Sure. So thanks for having me. This is my first blab. I'm like looking around and like, where are we? This is a really fun space and I'm excited to use it. And as I said, while you were gone, just that uh, I think a lot of us here, we can all congratulate ourselves for being a little bit early to this party. It's gonna be a hugely popular platform. And uh, I know a lot of people that are talking about it already. So yes, we met at Content Marketing World. They invite me to speak on the uh, advanced analytics track. Usually I'm giving presentations there on the topic of analytics. Uh, I learned this starting way back like 15 years ago because I was a uh, co-founder in this web design company, learned very quickly that there was only, uh, only building the website is only part of it. And we had to help our clients get more value by a better understanding search and analytics. And then later social and email marketing and content marketing. So uh, it's like eight years of, of blogging and social and um, like 15 years of, of search optimization and analytics. So yes, anything on the, any of those topics, I'm happy to take any questions. You can just type anything in at any time and we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to answer anything that, that any questions people have on any source of traffic or the other half of this. And I like to break it down quite simply by saying there's two goals in marketing. Everything we do has to reach one of these goals and they are basically to one, increase traffic and two, maximize the percentage of people who act. That's conversion rate. So everything is really about both traffic and conversions. So the whole trick for us is to make sure that we are uh, doing things that increase traffic through search, through social, through email, those three, those three channels mostly in content marketing, and then also that are building trust and removing distraction and making it frictionless so that visitors who are on the site will take an action and uh, actually convert. So analytics is a great compass and helps us make better decisions for both of those two challenges. And so where do you want to start? Search well, or? So the one thing that you, I want to, I want to jump into analytics because I don't, I don't use analytics um, like I should. I mean, I have a, my website is powered by Weebly. So mm -hmm. it's not like so terribly sophisticated. So, you know, that's why even though I, even though I have this really terribly simple website, your tips, when I do, you know, put them to work, always do show me results. But 
one thing that really stands out in my mind that you said was that naming your homepage home is like naming your book book. And I was like, wow. And that it matters so much what you name stuff. Um, is that right? It does. It's really important. So the single most important piece of real estate for search optimization on any website is the title tag, but more specifically the title tag for the homepage. And there is a sad number of websites that have home as their homepage title tag. So the problem here is that you're not indicating relevance for anything. You're not helping people find your site. You're not telling them what you're about. It really is like a, the most generic thing. Like, like if you did write a book and called it book, that would just be a terrible name for the book. Your homepage title tag is called home. That's indicating relevance for nothing. So what we need to do is to understand what business category we're in and what phrases we have a chance of ranking for within that category and making sure that that is the phrase that appears at the beginning of our homepage title tag. So it might be, you know, Cleveland social media marketing, or if the training page might be about social media training in Cleveland, Ohio, whatever that, that main would, you know, imagine think it's empathy. So think of it that way. People who are looking for you are typing what into a search engine. You just go backwards from that outcome. It's empathy. The, the greater extent to which we can imagine the mindset and the, and the, the needs and the pain and the goals and walk in the shoes of our audience, that's the extent to which we're going to succeed. So the homepage title tag should almost always be the name of the category. If it's a service, maybe it's the geography. So for us, it's Chicago Web Design and Development. Uh, the fact that we have that indicates relevance in such an important way that we get traffic that we would never get otherwise. Uh, it helps us rank very high for that phrase, attracting a lot of very targeted visitors and uh, visitors we can turn into leads through conversion and through trust and through web design. So, but would your title of your homepage be Chicago what you just said? Chicago Web Design and Development dash Orbit Media. Put the brand at the end. So the homepage title tag, it's, uh, you know, keep it down to like 55 characters if you can. But use the name, the business category, the phrase someone would use if they were searching for you. If they knew they were looking for your service, they would type what in, put that there, and then put the brand at the end. So it, uh, in our case, it's Chicago. I think it's Chicago Web Design and Development slash or dash or pipe Orbit Media. Okay. All right. So analytics, when you talk about um, increasing traffic using analytics, you're talking about Google Analytics, which is what is the, what is the URL for Google Analytics? I think it's google.com slash analytics. I think it is That's too. where we would all find it. To be able to see it for your site, you have to have the analytics tracking code put onto all of your pages. Uh, you have to have, um, that. it's a tiny piece of JavaScript that appears on every page on your website. Make sure it's on every page or else uh, the analytics won't be very accurate. It causes problems if it's not everywhere. And if you're using a WordPress site or a platform, maybe like a, um, you mentioned Weebly, these tools should yeah. make it very easy for you to do that. There's probably one place where you just copy and paste in the code or the number and it appears everywhere. And so how do we use analytics to increase traffic? Well, it's the way that we measure results. Every action we take, we can see what the results are from that action, and we can see what our visitors are doing based on that action inside analytics. So for example, suppose we're sending a newsletter. We want to know our email service provider, our email program will tell us what percentage of people opened it and what percentage of people clicked. But that's all that service knows. It doesn't know what they did once they landed on your site. So we can use analytics through another trick called campaign tracking. We add a tiny bit of code to our links, we'll explain. And then that will show us how deep these people went, what percentage of them stayed, how many minutes they stayed on the website. So that's a once we have that information, we might realize, ah, email campaigns work best when we send them on this day of week, or email campaigns work best when we're when they're on this topic. Or they work, uh, you know, or the, this list, this segment in our list is uh, tends to be more engaged. So it helps us get smarter. It, it, if you think of it, it, it's the opportunity to turn every action you take in marketing into a mini test. And then the test results will show you whether or not you should do more of that activity or do less of it. Can it help you? Can Google Analytics help you figure out what you should be writing about? Absolutely. Talking about or creating like videos about? Definitely. It's a great okay. example. So inside your analytics, there's a section called uh, behavior. There's like four main sections, acquisition or no audience, acquisition, behavior, conversions. Those initials, think about it. It's A, A, B, C. 
kind of organized like alphabetically, which is sort of nice. Um, audience reports are who's visiting, acquisition, where are they coming from, behavior, what are they doing, conversion, really what's working or how are our actions making a difference, converting visitors from visitors into leads or uh, visitors into, into customers or subscribers. So what they're doing, what topics are working, this would be in behavior, and it's under behavior, all content. This is the report that shows you how your pages are performing, how your posts are performing. So what you do is you just pull up that report and look at all of your blog posts, for example, and then you can see which are there patterns. Are these blog posts connecting better than those? Are these topics more interesting to our audience? Are they are people spending more time? Are they seeing more pages per visit? Which of our blog categories are people digging through the deepest? Um, there are ways to get very particular about you know this analysis and understand more specifically uh, comparing pages to pages, but uh, often at a glance, you can see very quickly, wow, everybody's reading these. I should go deeper on these topics. I should write a follow-up to that piece. What if you're just like, just fake? You're just like, I don't even know. I don't like, you're not even, you're not looking at what you, what you've blogged about because you're just, you're starting fresh. You're like, all right, I'm going to get serious about creating content that is what people want to read. And, and to do so, I'm going to do my research. So like, one thing I do in Facebook is to find the groups of people, groups joined by people who are the same people who I think would want to read what I have to offer. Mm -hmm. I will type in to graph search groups joined by people who like Amy Porterfield. Mm -hmm. And then that populates a list of groups. And, and then that's so easy from there. Then it's just like, it gets more and more and more uh, like, fractal i guess i love that that's David great say, you know so so like how can you do that for a blog post to figure sure. out what to write about right so i would go outside of analytics in this case but just use google.com and let's say we were dog trainers mm -hmm. uh we might type into google.com why do dogs like we're looking for a topic that our audience cares about people who are who need dog training might type in something like this would be a good topic for a blog post or for a video so if you go to google and you just type in why do dogs? Here, let's do it. This will take just a second. On another screen I've here, got why I'm going to go to google.com. Dog scratch the floor. And when we, when we type in why do dogs, Google is going to suggest a bunch of other topics for us, right? Why do dogs space lick? Why do dogs eat grass? Why do dogs howl? Why do dogs pant? Now I type in the letter A. Why do dogs... And cats eat grass. Why do dogs attack? Why do dogs attack other dogs? Why do dogs age so fast? So these are all ways in which we could get topics. We're hacking the internet. We're using Google Suggest to give us topics. But it's long and slow and boring to do it that way, typing every letter of the alphabet one at a time. So there's a tool. I'm going to give you a tool now. Or I'll put it into the little, little box here. Use this tool to extract from Google Suggest topics that your audience is interested in because you know that they're, 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 it's coming out of Google. It's called KeywordTool.io. KeywordTool.io actually scrapes all these word phrases out of Google Suggest. And will then, and these are basically lists of blog topics. So type in a question word plus your topic word. And it's going, and then it will give you hundreds of blog posts that you could write about tomorrow and potentially rank for next week. Wow. Okay. Can you give me an example again? Just so, I mean, like I'm, just like as sure. if I'm in kindergarten. So I'm going go to, to keywordtool.io. Keyword. Uh -huh. uh, one second. And I'm going to type, I'm going to type, why do dogs without finishing the sentence, right? We want it. It's going to suggest something. Why do dogs? And it has suggested 118 different phrases. At least some of these are going to be good blog posts, good topics for us. Why do dogs have tails? Why do dogs shake? Why do dogs eat dirt? Why do <laughs> these are all articles we could write about, right? This is stuff that if we're a dog training company, these would be perfect content marketing topics. Why do dogs bite other dogs? So maybe I'd create a whole series of content on dog biting. These posts are going to link back to my article to my main service page about dog training. It's going to help me rank for, you know, Chicago dog training when lots of other websites like and link to or lots of other people mention or share my mini version of Wikipedia about dog biting. 
you know, our goals as content marketers is to create the mini version of Wikipedia for our industry. I can do that even without knowing the industry because I can use tools like this. It's data-driven empathy. I can use tools like this to extract the demand, to extract the phrases that we know people are looking for. I'm using data to, to get in the minds of my audience without really, I don't even have a dog, right? I never think about these topics. It doesn't matter. I don't need to have a dog. I don't, you know, I could write about anything. I can just use tools like this to find the topics. And then, you know, these other tricks, Jen, use social media to find experts. You could actually write articles even if you had no ideas and no time whatsoever. You just find the questions through keyword tool or through Google Suggest and then find experts to answer your questions. Write a roundup. <laughs> I can create content with zero ideas and zero time. I'm writing a great piece that could rank high and uh, be shared a lot. Well, you know, one thing that I see happening, and I'm sure I'm in a fishbowl, you know, because the people who are on Blab are pretty much the same people who are on Periscope. I mean, everybody who's live streaming right now are all, you know, sort of part of the same community, sort of. And I'm, I'm thinking, um, when you go and if you do that with the keyword tool or yeah, keyword tool, then the same thing goes for any of these platforms. I mean, I can entitle my Periscope or my blog, um, whatever is ranking highly in Google. And even though I'm not going to get maybe that direct SEO juice on my page, I'm still creating traffic around my brand. And if someone clicks on my profile, I mean, they're eventually going to go to my landing page or my website or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can use this, not just thinking about blogging and keywords, but creating content across all channels, right? Absolutely. And really the great piece of content is promoted on all the channels. You know, when we create something, we send it as a newsletter, we optimize it to rank, we collaborated with influencers often to make sure that it gets shared. So the, my whole thesis in the book, and this is, we think about this all the time, you know, a single piece of content can be promoted across all the channels. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, <laughs> upside down. So you create one piece of content. That's the hard part, right? But it's not the, the success, you know, it's, it's not the best content that wins. It's the best promoted content that wins. Right. Uh, an example of this I sometimes give is that the New York Times does not have a list of the best books. They have a list of the best selling books. Right. That's a marketing list, right? Yeah. That's that those are the books that were best promoted. It's not the best books, right? Right, right. The best books you'll never find them. Those people did a bad job of marketing. It's genius is everywhere. They just you'll never you'll never know it because those people didn't promote it very well. Right, right. So yes, we need to, it's the best promoted content that wins. And a single article can be optimized to rank for a regular for a relevant key phrase search it can be sent to a list that grew that we grew from scratch and these people ask for our content that's email and it can be designed specifically to get shared through images or get shared through collaboration with influencers or you know to get social traffic so yeah every piece of content we create is designed to get traction in all three channels or mostly um, uh, most of the content we create is designed specifically to get traction in search social email bottom line never create a piece of content without a plan to get traffic to it in mind from the start you say that last sentence again, never plan. N never create a piece of content without a plan to drive traffic to it. Create content with content promotion in mind. Well, okay. But what if you're just not passionate about that particular thing? What if you just like, you have something you want to write and you want to say, and you just hope that you throw it against the wall and like it sticks and that you didn't do any research about you didn't have a plan. I mean, I'm not saying that because that's the way I operate, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 know. I, mean, I, I will say, oh, my gosh, a peer in is the coolest thing. You know, I've got to tell the world about it and then I'll do a tutorial and I didn't check to see if anybody wants to really know about it. I just created it and I hope for the best, you know. Sure. But that's probably not a good strategy. Well, it's not as likely to succeed. I mean, you can eventually succeed if you just try to try, you know, shoot in every direction. Maybe you'll hit something. Right. It's possible. Uh, a way to in that example, you know, you maybe have a better chance of having that scene if you found a marketing manager at a peer in and included a couple of quotes from them in your article about a peer in. And then when, once it goes live, bring it to their attention, then they are very likely to share it. So there was a little bit of uh, ego bait. You put some, you know, you baited the trap and you included them in your content, knowing that increases the likelihood that they'll share. Or 
you aligned it with a key phrase. You wrote an article called, you know, how to create an online green room. You know, maybe that's a phrase that someone's searching for. Maybe even a few people a month, maybe very few people, but you optimized it. You made the best page on the internet for that topic because you know Appearin is the best tool and a great answer for that question. Or maybe that was also included in your newsletter, right? That's one of the articles you made in this weekly roundup where you put all your best posts together. And so you've got a search, a social, and an email plan, at least in advance. You know, you're thinking about the subject line in advance or collaborating with a marketing manager at that company, or you optimize it to rank for some, you know, maybe less popular, but not very competitive phrase. So, you know, the, the, tr the trick is to make sure that we are thinking about how people get to it. That's really the difference between content and content marketing, right? The word right. marketing's in there because we're promoting this content. It's right. it's not just, you know, otherwise it's just like a personal blog. You're writing because you love to write, which nothing wrong with that at all. Right. Nothing right. wrong with that. But if you have a, a, a you know, a business goal that is aligned with this content, um, ideally we've got a plan to go with it to maybe um, try to get uh, some traction from it. So when you sit down with, a, with one of your clients um, at Orbit Media and you know, you, you design this beautiful website for them and then it's time, then they're like, okay, Andy, we need to know how we're going to get people here to look at our website. What if it's like the most boring company? Like what if it is just, I mean, what if they make zipper pulls? Okay. Like they make the pulls on the zipper. Maybe that's stupid. No, because they need a website too, because there's people, there's their customer that needs sure. to find them. What would you, how do they make content? How do people who think they have boring content get found? It's a great question. There's some people who have written entire like eBooks on this, like what to do for, you know, in really boring industries. In the case of the zipper pull company, their target audience is probably going to be people who are sourcing materials for apparel manufacturing. So people who have people who are sort you know apparel manufacturing sourcing pe in professionals have what other concerns? You know they're thinking about online uh, on time delivery. They're thinking about reducing costs. They're thinking about quality control. So what is the broader spectrum of things that someone cares about in that world? Well, you know they want to know that there um, I don't know there's like human rights issues in that topic that you could write about. There are uh, quality and logistical issues that you could write about in that topic. Uh, there are colors and style and fashion issues you could talk about in that topic. Now that you, I mean, if you just think more broadly, uh, put yourself in the mind of that person who's a buyer, think about more broadly all the things that they might care about in business. You know, you're only going to be indirectly related to some of those topics, but you're going to build relevance. They're going to open your emails because they know that you publish useful stuff on that. Think about us. You know, you and I met and, and I publish all this stuff about marketing. Very, very little of it's about web design, it's true. right? Right. How do I build an audience who cares and listens and wants to talk and, you know, will link to us and subscribe to us and follow us and share us? Web design is a very small world compared to the world of marketing. So we went for the broader topic. People who need our help also have these other concerns. So we publish all this stuff on this related topic to become a Wikipedia for a broader industry, for broader topics, so that when people do think of web design, uh, that they think of us. So content marketing is always about the mission of the business, help people make better garments or help people get better results from web. But it's in the broader context than just that one specific thing you do as a paid service or product. So no, zipper pulls, that'd be a fun industry. You and I would do amazing things for that company. If we had a client doing zipper pulls, Jen, we'd be, we should collaborate on that. I think let's go find that company, that zipper pull company, because they need us. Um, they do. Help them. All right. But so Andy, you are, when you do, I just don't understand how, so you speak all over the place. You 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 have this big company. You do all this volunteering. You founded this um, B. What was it? B. Oh, we're a B Corp. Yeah, we're certified B Corp, which is a status that says it's like a four hundred three B. Is that what that means? Uh, no, it's a certification that says that we have social and environmental causes in mind as we do business. It's a big trend, not as big as Blab, but you'll hear about it. I feel like such a moron because now that you said that, like I have heard of it. So, but okay. So you started one of those. Okay. So you're doing that. And, and then, oh yeah, over here on the side, anybody in this room who's never read one of Andy's blog posts, just go over to Orbit Media and look at, he doesn't publish a blog post so much as he publishes like a manifesto or, or a whole book, like every time you post a blog post. And then it's such a lesson every time you do it because you do bring in influencers. Um, you, And then it's like a step-by-step -step guide to do stuff. So my question is, 
how is that possible? Are you recycling stuff? Do you, do you repurpose stuff? Like, how do you put together something like that? It must take you days. Well, I think a lot of people have a bunch of posts in the back of their mind. So here's an example. And what, what might be my next blog post? I'm not sure yet. We don't have a con. Uh, here's a confession. I don't really have an editorial calendar. I don't have a strong plan. We don't know. I know it's true. I don't know what I'm going to publish next. I often don't know until the week before. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just thinking, you know, I'm collecting things for future posts all the time. So as an example, I used to, I, I listened to audiobooks. I recently canceled audible.com. The unsubscribe process, amazing. They like kept, they kept lowering their, like while I'm trying to get out, they're lowering their prices. Right. They're offering me free stuff. They're asking me to take a survey. I took eight screenshots of the unsubscribe process in audible. I got off someone's email list and I saw like they, they had a very clever, like, you know, uh, don't get off our list message. Uh, you know, so I've been collecting these like unsubscribe process screenshots. So it's been three months of this now and I'm getting ready to publish a post. So I, what I think a lot of people have is a bunch of things that are partly done. They have a big parking lot or like, what do you call it? Like ice box or something where they're just, these things are kind of on hold. I have a spreadsheet with a probably 60 half written posts in it. So whatever gets closest to being finished, I maybe will invest the time and focus on and try to get it done before the weekend. I don't want to work. I try not to work on the weekends if I can, but a lot of us do. Uh, so it's just having, you know, uh, content marketers are collectors, have a mechanism for capturing things. Some people carry a notebook in their pocket. Some people have Google Docs or uh, uh, Evernote. So make sure that you are always collecting. You're always building lists and that you're always building up towards something so that when you get time where the next one's needed, that you've got five or 10 options of things that are getting close to being ready to be fully fleshed out. All right, so I was doing this because I was waiting to hear what your what is your tool like? Do you, is it Evernote? Is it what? What do you use to stay organized and that productive? Well, I use a Google Doc template, which I could share with everyone. Please. It's uh, it's wow, it's, yeah, it's my content marketing template. Here, try this. Search Google for uh, web content template. Web. We'll see if I ranked it. Content. This there. Is awesome. This the, is like the third one down is my website content template. So if you click on that, everyone. Oh, someone's having trouble hearing us. Deb. Deb, it sounds like you can't hear me. Testing one, two. Oh, no. Well, no one else. Can everybody else hear Andy? Jason. Okay. John says you're perfect. Human two can hear us. Great. Ken. Jason, um, I don't know what's happening, Deb. Um, anyway, wait, which one I should, are you? Uh, if, any, if you guys search for website content template, you'll find that it's on orbitmedia.com. The link at the top of that post goes to a Google Doc, which you should steal. Just take it and copy it. And every time I write something, I go through that Google Doc. And it forces you to think about promotion. It, it, that's my advice from earlier. Don't create content without promotion in mind. So if you use that Google Doc, it's going to force you to think about subject lines, sharing with influencers. It's going to think about key, keyword research. So I use that. Every time I get an idea, I basically go to that document and I copy it. You have to start by copying it. Don't overwrite the original. And then uh, keep and then take that thing and make it um, uh, start filling it out a little bit. Jot it in your notes, whatever you needed. And then if I don't finish it right there on the spot, I just put it into another document. It's a spreadsheet of ideas. So I've got the start on it and I've got the spreadsheet that captures all of them. It's not that efficient. I know that some people use Evernote or uh, some people just use WordPress. If they're using WordPress as their CMS, they just create a new post in WordPress, even if it's a draft and they just start writing into WordPress and they'll like leave it sometimes for months. I know right, Ginny right. Dietrich does that. Yeah. Uh, so it's really whatever works best for you. All right. So you, back to your Audible account, why did you cancel it? And what are your favorite podcasts? Because I want to listen um, to what you're listening to. Well, podcasting, I'm still listening to, and there's so many good podcasts. Oh, out yeah, there. Audible is uh, like books. So okay, but yeah. I want to know both. I want to know like your your favorite like business audio Audible book because I also listen to audio books when I'm walking, and then also your favorite podcasts. Well, for business audio books, I listened to Delivering Happiness not long ago by Tony Shea, the Zappos CEO. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was really good. I also liked. Um, uh, there's that one, Creativity Inc., which is about Disney or Pixar. There's there's a lot of good books. I like biographies of CEOs. Um, great, great stuff out there. For podcasts, uh, there are 
Um, I'm a big fan of Social Media Examiner's podcast right now because he had me on last week, and I was really honored by that. Michael Stelzner, I'm a big fan of all the stuff they do. Um, I might be starting a podcast soon with Barry Feldman. He and I are talking about using Blab to make some kind of podcast, which would you be must. fun. You must. You have to. You, this It'd is so great. perfect. It'd be super fun. He's such a character. Do you know Barry? No, I don't think I, I don't think I know him, but I know you, and I want you to be on a podcast. Uh, then I appreciate the confidence. We'll probably do that, but. Uh, Jay Akunzo just launched one called Traction, which I recommend. There's a podcast called Traction. I'm writing this down. He's doing a this great, great job. I haven't heard of any of these. Barry Feldman. Yeah, Barry Feldman doesn't have a podcast yet, but uh, I recommend following him. Okay. He writes all over the place. His Twitter handle is at Feldman Creative. Um, such a character. He was at Content Marketing World. I didn't go this year. I couldn't. I couldn't go. Tim and two likes Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is prolific, of course. Yeah, that's. Um, um, yeah, Tim Ferriss is prolific as the word. I mean, I, I I don't know when he sleeps. Um, okay. Does anybody want to come in and take a seat and talk to Andy? I mean, you can ask him. He's very approachable, as you can see. But um, there's not a brighter mind in on the internet with all this content marketing, analytics, strategy. He knows it all. Okay, John wants to join us. John is also a rock star. Um, John actually was live streaming like in the 90s, for real. He had a company, uh, a live streaming company. I learned that today. I'm one of his blabs. Um, so Deb says she cannot hear or see you, but everybody else can. Deb, do this. I bet you accidentally muted his window when you were giving people props. So Deb, look in mm -hmm. his window on the left-hand corner of Andy's window, there's like a little icon of a speaker. If you click on that, then you'll be able to hear him. Um, I bet you. I guarantee Testing you. Testing one, what, two. I, I Is that any you. better, Deb? Let us know. And then John could, John was pulsating but didn't actually make it in. He'll find his way back. Here we go. Do you have to click to add him there? Yeah, I did. I clicked to add him, and then, like, I accepted him. There he is. Oh, I think maybe we both had to click. There he is. No, we I don't just came in to, sh to show you your lower third, and that's it. I got to go back to my other flap now. So, Andy, do you see what's on his lower third? Yeah, it looks great. It's me. How did you get that there? So he uh, he can do all this fancy stuff. Hmm. And he, but we couldn't get. I want. We were working on it all day to try to get it on my blab so that you would be not all day and think that I was like legit. I was like, I want to look really great for this blab with Andy Crescidina. So he's been working on it furiously, feverishly. And um, we, there's just this final step that on my end where I can't get it uploaded. So he mm. said he would show up so you could see the lower third, but he's got to go back to his blab. Uh, John, I'm following you now on Twitter. I can tell you're a pro. Uh, an endorsement from Jen means a lot. So uh, let's let's connect and keep in touch. It's not, I'm I'm in the internet marketing business, so I handle all of Mike Tyson's online presence. So, Mike wow. Tyson, the well, fighter. Yes, he's one of my clients. Yeah. Hmm. That's got to be fun. It's fun. He's a fun client. I bet. What okay, are you guys. About? What, are, what are you leaving us for? That's more important than this. Uh, we're working on the telethon, the blabathon for Friday. Oh well, shut my mouth. He really is doing something amazing. There's a there's a young man with cerebral palsy in the like streaming community, Andy, and John put together this like blabathon and people hmm. are going to donate to help get him a good computer because he he's like a, a major enthusiast, but his computer really isn't any good. So John's yeah. trying to raise four thousand dollars for his um, for this blabathon. Where's the I'll link? Put the link in. Yeah. Will you put the link in here for yeah. us, John? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, John. No, thank you. Are you kidding? This is so cool. There you go. All right. Hey, Andy, I look forward to look forward to seeing your stuff. Uh, just from the five minutes I was in it, you obviously know what you're talking about. So I, I'm. Let's uh, connect. Sounds great. My pleasure. My pleasure to meet you. Hope to see you soon. Good, good luck with your day. Okay. Take care. Thank you, John. Uh, it was so funny when I first met John, and I was tell, asking people. I was doing a blab where I would like evaluate your 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 Facebook profile. So mm -hmm. he plugged his in there and Mike Tyson showed up and there were like four, four and a half million likes or something. And I, and I just laughed. I'm like, ha ha, you know, 
I'm so glad Mike Tyson is in the house, you know? And, but then he said, no, really, that is, that is the Facebook page that I manage. I was like, well, yes, well, I think, you know, I don't think you need my input on your four and a half million, um, you know, likes, I think you're doing okay. But anyway, he's, he really is an interesting person. Okay. Anybody, somebody want to take a seat? So Deb, did you, you said the speaker is turned on. So does that mean you still can't hear his speaker is on, but you still can't hear Testing him? Testing one too, Deb. Hope, hope she's getting the audio here. Okay. And hey, Alice, you want to join us? Uh, you had a really awesome blab earlier today. Chris, anybody want to take a seat and ask Andy some questions? He has your answer. Um, so, all right. So, okay. So let me ask you what right now, and not to put you on the spot, but what are your, what websites are you most impressed by in terms of their ingenuity and what they're doing with content marketing? Hmm. Well, the structure of the sites that I'm watching very closely are the blogs that are doing new types of layouts where it's just a single column with nothing, with no, nothing on the sides, no right rail, nothing at all. Uh, we're going to redesign our site here eventually, and I'm leaning toward a design that has a single column layout, uh, which works great on mobile, and it lets the visitor just totally focus on the, image, on the, on the site itself, uh, on the content. I'm really impressed by editors and bloggers who are putting in more than one image into their content so that there's always something to see as you scroll down. For years, I told people, well, how many things can be the most prominent things on the page visually? The answer is obviously only one thing can be the most prominent thing on a page. Right. But actually, it's not the page itself. It's how many things can be the most visually prominent thing at any scroll depth. So ask yourself as you look at your website and what great people are doing on their sites right now is that they're making sure that there's always something that's supposed to be the most important thing visually, no matter how far down you scroll. So don't ever give your visitors a desert of text where there's just a big blocky area you know, halfway down your thousand word post where there's nothing there but text. Put images in. Look at Social Media Examiner's blog. There's no depth, there's no scroll depth at which you can't see at least one image. So load up your content with lots of pictures, lots of screenshots, stock images, whatever, just to make sure that you can capture that scan reader's attention, keep them from bouncing, keep them going farther down the page. I'm also uh, really interested right now in how people are doing the uh, uh, using audio content. I saw Ian Clary doing this. We mentioned Ian earlier. Uh, Ian is reading his blog posts and making a little SoundCloud, embedded SoundCloud audio clip that goes to the top of the post. That's going to help people who just want to get the content a different way. You know, I was trained to be a teacher, and we should always make sure that our, we're appealing to our audience's many different learning styles and publish stuff that's you know, interactive and text-based and video and audio. But the future of Google is the measurement of what percentage of people stay for a few seconds versus stay for a few minutes. If you've got a blog post and it ranks on page one, but m most people who see it are bouncing very quickly. You can see this in your analytics. Uh, not... It's fine if everyone bounces, but it's not fine if everyone bounces after two seconds. We want to keep people on the page and create what's called the long click. Create what's called long dwell time. Okay. Dwell time is a user interaction signal that Google sees and pays attention to. So adding video at the top of a page or reading your blog post and using the audio clip as embedded content at the very top will get people to stay for longer, which has an indirect benefit by sending a signal to Google that this content is relevant for that topic. People who clicked on it stuck around for a while. So that's actually, it's a, it's not that Google can see what's in there, but it's a search engine optimization tactic because it plays to its human psychology, leveraging a user interaction signal, getting people to hang out on the page longer. If they click from Google to your page and leave, that's is that, that could be a short click or a long click. We're trying to create the long click. So if they click on the SoundCloud, does that not then take them over to SoundCloud? Or are they still technically on your page? Yeah, I'm very selfish and greedy about sending people away. I don't want any visitors to leave any of my clients' websites. So keep them there. Don't send them to SoundCloud. Don't send them to YouTube. And whatever you've got, embed it there. Uh, this is the same reason why I tell people not to put big candy-like social media icons on the top of their page. You don't really want your visitors to leave your website and go to a social media network. You know, it's better if they stay on your website. You want traffic to come from social media to your site, but you, it's not great for lead generation for you. If a visitor on your site bounces and goes to Facebook, Facebook has ads, Facebook has competitors, Facebook has cute puppies and kittens. <laughs> you know, you kind of want to keep people on your website. <laughs> right. If people leave your site and go to Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, they're very unlikely to return. Okay, but so then why was it a good idea for him to put the SoundCloud 
doesn't so it doesn't take him away it doesn't no oh okay it keeps the visitor there okay got it okay um oh that's a really good tip well ian's got sort of an advantage because he's got that awesome accent so he does i know it's charming right you turn it on like oh got to listen to this guy right. from dublin he's talking about social media tools yeah i don't care what he's talking about like i just will listen you know because he's got that cute that was pretty good that was a pretty good accent you just did there uh, I, I couldn't do Ian as well as he could. He's probably in Blab somewhere. I wonder if we could find him. You should tell him to join us. Oh, speaking of cute accents, um, Samantha, do you want to take a seat? Yeah, she said he's on Blab now. Um, uh, um, how could I? I could tweet to him. Do it. Okay. That Let's see if awesome. I can get Ian to join us. Yeah, that's how we get anybody in here. It's like you could just send out a tweet and – um, one thing that this won't last long, I'm sure, but with Blab, they're so incredibly responsive, you know, because they're brand new and they're nimble. But there's a um, there's a person named Brittany who works with Blab. And if you type, we're not going to do it, but if you type, it used to be at help. Now I think it's at Blab in the comment section. She'll just appear like a little blonde headed fairy, like a little like a mm -hmm. like um, your fairy godmother right here. In oh, really? OK, so we've got Samantha. With a cute accent also. She's over in Ireland and she's pulsing in. And also we've got some questions. Um, I'm appearing like a blonde fairy as well. You are appearing like just a the blonde. accent. Yeah, you see, he likes the accent. <laughs> yeah, I just joined. Um, hi, Jen. Great to see you. Hi, Andy. Great to see you as well. Hi. Andy. Andy, Samantha. Hello. Hello, Samantha. Yeah, I just saw you were here. I was in another blab. I won't say I don't want to get people away from this blab, but um, I just decided, you know, I join another blab. So I look, I'm blab I know. hopping. You were, you were in the Mari Smith blab, I'm sure. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's but, all right. That's okay. People, but then people I saw you watch. and I went, oh, oh, I have to go and go to Jen, see Jen. Well, and Sean that's and awesome. People. I'm not the show today for sure. Um, Andy is just brilliant. He uh, is a content marketing expert and web designer and all that good stuff. And no, you didn't miss all the good stuff, Sean. In fact, Sean... I'm just, he said he missed all the good stuff. You need to um, take advantage of the fact that we have this genius here because really um, Andy hasn't been over to Blab and he's not, hasn't been scoping, but in the world of content marketing, if you try to go and see him at a conference, you can't get a seat. And the content marketing world, they actually opened up a sec second, like 500 person room. And then if you want to talk to him after the fact, he's happy to, but there's a line of like 20 people oh. who want to pick his brain and ask him questions. So Seriously, I want people to ask questions. I know Scott's going to ask questions. He just joined. Um, I am honored to be here with you then, Andy. Okay. And you know what? You love Blab. <laughs> you love it. Oh, it's brilliant. It's honestly. fun so far. I'm I'm very impressed. And uh, I owe one to Jen for giving me my uh, my first taste here. So well, if you want to talk about like, oh, sorry. Sorry, Samantha. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just was going to say, like, I know that you will appreciate this, Andy, and I'm sure it's already been explained to you. But what is really so unbelievable about this is you like we could have, you know, you and Mike Stelzner and, you know, you could have really big people who have huge audiences can be sitting in the room and then somebody with no audience can come and join. And as soon as like Samantha joined this, if we OK, so I'm going to tell a little bird now. So I'm posting a tweet. So now it's going to show that she was a she's a part of this. So it's going to hmm. get tweeted out now with Samantha in it. Every time somebody's in the room, that's a whole new like it's a whole new blab really at that point. Hmm. And so yeah. like if Mike Stelzner was in here and we tweeted it out, well, his followers are all going to come over here and they might have come over to see Mike, but they got a little bit of Jen Laner and maybe hmm. just maybe like four people that like him will like me too and start following me. So it's like the fastest growth that I, it's just unbelievable. Yep. Um, I need a better mic. Okay. Let me hold this up. Is this better? I just oh, look. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I do need a better mic. I'm working on it. I'm in a hollow room, but we have some questions up here. I don't know if you saw me, Andy. Um, Chris wants to know any tips on Kickstarter content marketing slash – am I, I'm not reading that right. Any tips on Kickstarter content marketing slash websites? Hmm. I've never done a Kickstarter, so I'm probably not the best person to answer this. But I people have. that do Kickstarter – have you? Mm. Samantha, no, you, let's You go let's ahead, though. First. No, afterwards I'll tell you. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
you go ahead. Well, I was just going to say a lot of the normal uh, marketing tactics apply. Psychology is important. Uh, yeah. You want to make sure that the benefit is very clear. You want to make a video. People that do well make videos in there. Uh, if there's any mission or purpose-driven aspect to your Kickstarter, you want to really play up the impact that it would make. Uh, talk about your history and your origin. It's a lot about storytelling in a very short space in that in that initial video. And then using all the full court press out off-site tactics to do social and email uh, to kind of uh, you know invite people in. Yeah, um, I, I the biggest I've done a few Kickstarters for clients uh, on Twitter because Twitter is 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 really receptive to Kickstarters. But the mistake that people are making is that they're not building their community first and then launching their Kickstarter. So they're just going on saying support our Kickstarter, and it's like, well, who are you talking to? There's no one there to hear you. So you know, really, you have to build your relationships and community. It's the same thing as everything, really. You know build your relationships first and then you have your audience so make sure you connect and target the right people so if it's something that mums would love you know you start following all the mums and the family type things and if it's something that you think the tech guys are going to love and the startups then you know you need to connect with all those first and then you launch your kickstarter but that's a mistake we've seen often with clients who've come to me and they have like 200 followers and i'm like you know, <laughs> you should have come to me a month ago. So we could have actually targeted, you know, get a, a load of followers first. So, yeah, it, it does work, though. I got mine on Indiegogo. Um, I was crowdfunding, so I couldn't afford to get my book printed. <laughs> and so I just, uh, I said, oh, sure, I'll crowdfund it. And I, and I got it, you know, and you have to offer really good perks. So some of the perks, I'm still doing the perks that were, some of the perks were like a one-to-one -one lesson, stuff like that. So. Yeah. You want to put a link to your book? Is it already published? Put a link in there for us. Ah, no. It's okay. I'm not here to yep. sell my book. I don't care, but we just still put it in there. It does. I know you're not. You do nothing yeah, sure, but like no, give and give and give. That was my like, first thought. Okay, so okay. Put Come your on, link Sam, it's not that great shy. now. It's not that great. It's just, it was my first It's one. great. It's great. <laughs> you're terrible. Don't do that. Don't, you're, you're being a terrible salesperson right Listen, now. Love, right. Jen, Jen, I love it because I remember when I met you and – um, was it coach Jenny that introduced us? I don't know. Somebody was talking about how shy you were and, and how she, they were coaching you to, to be more outgoing. And then look at the role reversal. Now Jen's telling Sam, <laughs> come on, bring it. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's embarrassing with, you know, to like get sort of like publicly, you know, praised, you know, and then, in front of everybody, okay. you know, that makes you a little bit bashful. You know, you were propping Andy, but you two ladies rock. Okay. Oh well, thank you very much. I know you well, got fans. Look, people are chatting about you. I took Thanks. your suggestion, Jen, and I, I originally attributed it to <clears throat> Sam since she has that cool name of Tweeting Goddess. No, it wasn't but me. of sending those quick little video messages, and people are blown away. The little oh, I'm so glad. Replies, you didn't like, send me one though. Send me one. I will, because I've been on a blab with you now. Yeah, okay. So what so Andy, what, we're, what we're talking about is like how you can take your phone uh, and on Twitter you can just hit reply and then and then the the video, the camera, and then mm -hmm. say, Hey, you know, it was great being on a blab with you today, or thanks for following me or whatever, and then hitting send, keep it under thirty seconds. And yeah, there's been a, a good response to that. Hmm. Well, because so, it's that human that. touch instead of the yeah. automated DMs that everybody is sick of. <laughs> For sure. That's For a great sure. idea. Sean is in uh, Antigua, Gua Guatemala right now. Guatemala, sí. Really? Yo vivo in Antigua. That sounds nice. Where are you, yeah. Andy? So, look how come true. I'm in Chicago. I've never been to the States. I'm planning it next year. Well, Samantha, you're going to be there. Yes. I, will, hopefully. I look forward to seeing the Twitter pictures of Sam in the <laughs> US. Yeah, that's on my Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We definitely need to um have a have a meetup for sure. A blab um, I want to see you. Do you have any so, what a conference? We can have a conference. A blab, a blab yeah, conference. Okay. Andy, this can is I ask so you a great. Look at this. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. I have yeah. You can. So, of course, I have five minutes. I'm supposed to do a podcast, a litmus podcast at three o'clock my time. So I have just a few more minutes. OK, sorry. Okay. Uh, which do you think is best for a, you know, 
driving traffic using Twitter, yeah, uh, whatever, I know all that, but um, analytics, um, I'm not really familiar with the whole SEO thing, but I've just been, um, like, would you be familiar, like, I blog a lot and I use LinkedIn, you know, the pulse on LinkedIn. Do you think that's better for my SEO than just blogging on my bla on my own site? Like, is it the more I question. share it, the it's better? It's definitely better for, Yeah. So let's say that you write a blog post that everyone loves and everyone shares and that some other bloggers decide that they're going to link to it. Mm. If that blog post is on LinkedIn, those links to that blog post don't pass any authority to your website. They're passing their authority to LinkedIn. Yes, so when, every thought. time you write something that's not on your site, if it's very successful, you, it's a little bit sad because you miss the opportunity mm. to build the authority of your domain. domain uh, authorities per domain call it domain okay. authority. So uh, what you want to do is to almost never do I publish any content. I will publish on LinkedIn later, but I put it on my site first and I okay. promote it on my site first and I share it with bloggers and I share it and try to get traction to it. It's like using a PR style, write something worth linking to, write the best page on the internet for that topic. And maybe six months later, I might copy and paste the whole thing into LinkedIn. There is no such thing as a duplicate pe content penalty in that case. I wouldn't worry about that at all. Okay. Nothing wrong. I've talked to LinkedIn. Nothing wrong at all with just copying and pasting your articles right into LinkedIn. It's not going to hurt a bit. But uh, but make sure that you at least give your site the chance to get that traction first, to attract those links and those press mentions. That's how uh, you're going to get the biggest SEO benefit. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank so you. before you go, Andy, um, I have to... I got to do another little plug for his book. He didn't ask me to do this. It wasn't a prerequisite for him doing this blab. I really just love Andy. And I think that um, he he's just really one of those people who needs to be on your short list of like go to information. He's the only email that I open every single time that it comes like that good. And his book is fabulous. This book is so good just to keep it on your desk. It's in its third edition. And what I've done is. I've entered everybody's name. I had to start at the top of the list to be fair of everybody who's in the room. And if you have an egghead as your logo, you got just you aren't entered into the contest. But we're gonna spin the wheel, and whoever wins, whoever's name it lands on, gets. Um, <laughs> I love it. This is deadly. I am so impressed. <laughs> Here we go. Wheel. Not on their scope I'm so impressed as well. This is so exciting. <laughs> okay, I, can't, I, Jen, can't read I love that your one. ideas. So let's see here. Um, embrace. Embrace begins the name of this Twitter handle. I shortened them. It's Embrace oh, yeah. Parent. So is Embrace still in the room? Yay, that's you. Okay, so um, send me a DM with your snail mail, and you're going to get Andy's book. It's um, so, And you're going to love it. And Andy, Can you put um, the link for his, um, his newsletter, please, into the comment section? Can we get your link to your newsletter as well so I can sign sure. up for that? It, it, I'll, I'll put it in there right now. And for those of those Thanks. that have not won, is that book available on Amazon? <laughs> we can buy it. It is. It is. If you just search for the name Content Chemistry, you can find it on Amazon or you can find it anywhere. And it's, what uh, I was saying yeah. earlier that I love so much about it is that it's great. It's like it's um, there's a lot of white space and there's a lot of images and it's very colorful. So if you're a visual learner, you know, these kind of books can get kind of um, dry. But it's it's really like you can actually read this book. Uh, so, all right. So Andy, um, I'm so excited. I, I want to hear later what your thoughts are after being in a blab and, and I know you're going to start watching blabs, like what you think this means, how you're going to develop this for content, your, like your content marketing, like don't well, we're going to create a show. I'm going to do it with Barry Feldman and we're going to have you on. Oh, yay. Okay. Uh... Thanks. Okay, good answer. Oh, cool. um, That's a great answer. <laughs> okay, so um, well, I don't want to keep you any, but I've, um, yeah, anything I'm gonna else you want to say before the uh, replay since I missed all the 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 wisdom from Andy. So, well, definitely scroll up because he gave um, he gave a link to a uh, Google Doc template that he uses um, to create content. And then um, also, if you scroll up, there's a link to keyword.io, yeah. is it? Keywordtool.io. Yeah. It's a tool for sourcing um, topics from that by scraping them from Google Suggest. It's a great hack for figuring out what to write about. Uh, I don't know that we shared the link, but the, uh, the template that I mentioned, you can find by searching Google for web content template. 
It's one of the top ranked pages for that. It's at orbitmedia.com. Yeah, Jen, I can find it. I think that's how uh, we were sharing that. Yeah, stick it in there again. Okay. Or I can. Yeah, so I see it. I found it. Content Jen. marketing. Yeah. Uh, content chemistry. Content chemistry. Thank you. No, someone asked there in the comment section. So, yeah, content chemistry. Okay, great. Take a screenshot it. Take a <laughs> screenshot. Oh, and before you go, I have to take a screenshot before you leave, Andy. So say cheese. Um, okay, everybody smile. Everybody, you too, Sean, smile. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Melanie's Everyone saying hi to you. You're creating content. <laughs> Absolutely. Always. Great. This was so much fun. All right, well, Jen, I'm grateful thanks, for you showing this to me. Thank you. Sean, thanks Samantha. Is that your thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a time, Andy. Let's do it again. Hi, Jen. Bye, Andy. Okay, for sure. Take care. Aww. Thank you. Oh, let's see. Okay. All right. So wait, where did the, did I did I click Samantha out? Sorry, hun. Um, okay, so yeah, so we're just going to wrap it up. It was, um, it, for those of you who missed it, Andy Crestadina is a goldmine of information. He's one of my favorite, favorite go to people um, for all things uh, content, analytics, SEO. He's great. So make sure and go to orbitmedia.com and catch this replay if you missed the beginning. Okay, so take care, Sean. I'll catch you over in another blab right. here in a few minutes. I'm sure I'll find it somewhere. And is there a replay available? Did you do a blab with Janine or Johnine? I'm probably mad. Um, the, the lady that does the drawing. We're doing, she's going to be on my Twitter blab. Thank you for asking me. Um, if you go to my profile, you're going to see um, a link to my Twitter blab on Thursday. And Janine is going to be live graphic recording the whole thing. And um, because she wants to be, she wants to test out her services, but she was on with Joel Com last night. Yeah, you saw I, I, that, well, right? It came out in the Blab email from Brittany. With a Which I haven't read yet. But and, that was... and a picture of what she did from Joel's presentation. It's very cool what she's doing. Yeah, it, 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 it's, she's, she, and she's been inundated with requests for her service after Imagine. that, um, after that Blab. And which is just, it's, it's just jaw-dropping to watch the speed and the just the acceleration of everything with the way our networking and our relationships are growing in this Crazy. in this um, mm. wonderful new platform so the love 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 okay um all right you guys oh thank you thanks samantha put a link to my twitter to the uh, twitter lab if you guys want to subscribe and uh, catch the replay of this bye sean